university students venting their anger at the president, filmed on a mobile phone by someone very nervous. They're calling the president a fascist and a puppet of the hardliners. A rare show of public defiance, especially brave considering hundreds of pro-government students had been bussed in for the occasion. Iranian television only showed a brief glimpse of the disturbance. Later, President Ahmadinejad put a brave face on it, saying the protests showed there was freedom of speech in Iran. A day earlier, this was the scene preparing for President Ahmadinejad's visit. They're shouting death to the dictator, furious about the way students have been banned from studying because they criticize the government. This is Tehran University, the most political of all universities in Iran. Many now say that President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad has started a second cultural revolution here, just like the one shortly after the revolution when left-wing and liberal professors were purged and students screened for their commitment to Islamic values. We've been given permission to film inside the campus, but only on condition that we don't talk to any students or teachers. Not one student dared approach us while we were filming, even to ask what TV station we were from. We had minders with us at all times. We had to talk to students outside the campus, like Mehdi, who's been banned from doing a master's in political science because, ironically, he's been too active in politics. They told me that if you don't talk about your problem, it may be helpful to solve your case. And they threatened me that if I talk to the media, it might make things much worse for me. But I think this is not my problem alone. If we keep silent, it's easier for them to do the same things to other people. Mehdi has twice been arrested and still has court cases pending against him. He's what's known perversely in Iran as a three-star student. That means he has three bad marks against his name for political activism, enough to be banned from the university. This is the office of one of the few student bodies still operating. It was raided recently and the computers confiscated. They hold news conferences here, but it's not uncommon for the speakers to receive calls warning them to cancel their appearances minutes before they're due to start or for journalists to have their tapes of the proceedings taken away afterwards. This is where the banned students gather. We only want something that all officials want for their children. We are not asking for anything more. The Constitution has given us the right to education. Despairing, some of the three-star students staged this brief but tense protest outside the Ministry of Education asking why their right to education was being violated. Many received threatening phone calls the night before, warning them not to take part. Some tried appealing to a tribunal, which upheld their complaint, but the universities took absolutely no notice. But President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad denies that his government is harassing students. He says it's created an open atmosphere in the universities. The ears of the government are open to hear them. We listen properly even to the many unreasonable demands we hear. But it was President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad who personally appointed a hardline cleric for the first time since the revolution to head Tehran University. If the chancellor of a university is not friendly with the students, is not at their service and does not go to their dormitories and is not moving among them and listening to what they are saying, I declare it's better that this type of chancellor gives up his job to someone else. It would be a stretch of the imagination to say Ayatollah Amid Zanjani is friendly with his students or has ever visited their dormitories. The first time he entered Tehran University, students protested by knocking off his turban a sign of extreme disrespect for a cleric. A hundred students staged a demonstration and attacked me. If I hadn't been well protected, I would have been suffocated, and there was a possibility I could have been murdered. But I never objected, and I always said students have the right to protest. This protest in the summer was only filmed by a student with a mobile phone. This university is not an army barracks, says the speaker who was later expelled for a term. The university chancellor should resign, he says.
and there's applause. The posters make it pretty clear what the students think of their new Ayatollah turned chancellor. This is not a religious seminary, it's a university, reads one. Of course, anywhere in the world it would be a shock if a person without a university degree is appointed chancellor of the biggest university in the country. He doesn't even have a degree. He hasn't even spent one day in the university. He's a cleric. Ali has been arrested a couple of times and still gets threatening phone calls. They have stepped up the pressure to scare students. We think they've done this on purpose to frighten us, to send a message that if you want to be politically active, you will have problems in the future. And they target students scattered around the country from different universities. They do this to spread waves of fear. And the fear was palpable when we filmed in the house of this student leader just released from months in jail. Student activists from different universities came to welcome Musavi Khoini back home, but nobody dared talk politics until we'd switched off the camera. The authorities keep court cases pending against political activists like this in order to silence them. But it's not just the students. Professors have also faced problems. This is the Law and Political Science faculty. Just a few months ago, the government unceremoniously purged the head of the department here, as well as other professors in the university. It said they were past the retirement age, but they were younger than the Chancellor of Tehran University, himself an Ayatollah with no degree, picked for the job by President Ahmadinejad. The purge started after President Ahmadinejad made this speech saying secular and liberal thought should be expunged from the universities. It rang alarm bells when the president said secular and liberal figures should be removed from the universities. It seems this is the start of a project to clean the slate, to get rid of those intellectuals who are secular opponents of the government. Forty-five professors were purged in Tehran University alone, but not one dared complain in public. Unfortunately, none of the teachers who were forcibly retired gave interviews to the press. All of them went quietly back home. If there was any protest, it was from the students and ordinary people. Now, I have a question for these teachers. Why were you so silent? Students held the president's picture upside down in protest and then set it on fire. Now they're worried they're going to be arrested by a government that wants them to stay out of politics. They think students should go to their classes, read their books and then go back home and shouldn't get involved in the social and political issues around them in society. This is asking a lot. With the last major reformist newspaper closed by the government recently, students say even if they protest, nobody finds out about it. Abroad, they believe the only interest is in Iran's nuclear ambitions. The Islamic Republic has managed to focus the international community's attention on Iran's nuclear case and the possibility of an Israeli attack. That has diverted attention from the human rights situation in Iran. Because of this, they can seriously suppress their opponents inside Iran, labor activists, journalists and students. It's quite possible one day they will solve the nuclear issue and even suspend uranium enrichment. But in the meantime, they will have crushed all their internal critics. The restrictions on political activism are slowly and insidiously creeping in, shrouded in silence so that few sit up and take note. Until one day the effect will be the same as a sudden crackdown.